Hello, my name is Josh. I have successfully done an hour of videos so far. It's two weeks in and I've got an hour down. Less than 23 hours to go. This is exciting. So Sherlock was on yesterday and I was really disappointed with it after watching it. Really, really did not like it. And this video was originally going to be called something else. But I just rewatched the episode. My feelings have changed slightly. It's still not amazing. But I don't feel as strongly against it as I did on the first view. Because my idea of the original, the original video was, oh, good Sherlock. No, shit Sherlock. Get it? No. And then the title would be, no, shit Sherlock. Yeah. His Last Vow, written by Stephen Moffat, was on yesterday, and I really didn't enjoy it on the first viewing. But today, just now, I rewatched it with me pen and paper, and I noted down the things that I liked and the things I didn't like. But not like that, I just noted stuff down as it came up. So I'm just going to read from my notes and talk to you about those things. Okay, the first thing that struck me is, uh, Cam. Uh... Was that? Yeah, Magnuson. It was nice having Mickelson. Um, I was kind of excited. It was like, oh god, it's Hannibal's brother. But I didn't really enjoy his acting. It felt kind of inconsistent. Kind of fell flat on me. Maybe that was the point for I just didn't like it. I feel like we could have had a much more dynamic character than him. But I suppose it may be that I'm just missing Moriarty, who's a bit more flamboyant as you may say. Yeah, that was m one of my biggest problems with the episode was Mickelson. Sorry. Also, I feel like there were Hannibal references I I don't I don't know if it was just me seeing the Hannibal references, but I feel like they were pushed in and there were like a lot of them just in the opening scene. I feel like it was on purpose, but I don't know. It might just me be me seeing things where there aren't because I was I was look going into it with the mindset of oh it's Hannibal's brother. That wasn't yeah. Like the delicious and the, the him licking it, all felt very cannibalistic and maybe trying to push it too far, trying to please the audience whose demographic is also the demographic that watches Hannibal. Which is, by the way, an excellent show, comes back this year for a second series, so I suggest you go watch the first series if you haven't watched it, and then you can watch the new series when it comes out. Um, it's really good. Based on the novels by Thomas Harris, uh, it follows Will Graham and Hannibal Lecter in the events before the story of Red Dragon. Next up, um, when John, John goes all hero-like and he goes to the crack den. And he, he enters the crack den and then his lines, there's something great my friend earlier that I know what she's talking about. His lines felt very Sherlocky, like as if the lines weren't written for John's character, they were written more for Sherlock and then were just given to John's character. It's a bit disorientating at first. However, I actually quite liked it. He, it felt like he was trying to emulate Sherlock, he was trying to get this back. It was just him, so he is Sherlock and he's John. And I quite liked it. He, it felt good. But yeah, it can be a bit disconcerting as what's been raised by my friend Grace. Hello if you're watching. You're probably not. You've got better things to do. Also, I've got a question. That Bill, the one that uh, John beat up, who is he? Like, I get the feeling he might be become become more relevant later. Is he going to be Sherlock's new guy? Is he, like, replacing Watson? I don't want him replacing Watson. He doesn't seem like a very dynamic character. And also, he seems like a Sherlock equal, which is not a very good thing to have as a companion. He's suspiciously good at deducing and stuff and there's the implication that heroin makes you good at detective work but I think he may come back later in a more significant way in a more evil way possibly in the next series. My next note that I wrote uh, <laughs> I can write. The next thing I wrote down on my piece of paper was the word oversexualized uh, with a question mark after it. Uh, Sherlock, has he become too over-sexualized? Um, I feel like he was kind of established as an asexual character. The one exception to his asexuality being the woman, being Irene Adler, but 
Then we have Janine. And Janine, yeah, I quite, I loved her character in the last thing. She felt very fun and I could see Sherlock and Janine. But, I don't think it feels like it needs to be there. And the fact that he's also, in addition, using her as a thing, yeah, it kind of seems like a sherlock -y type thing. But it kind of unwrites all of the character development that has happened in this series. Throughout this series, Sherlock has become a more human, almost more likeable character to even the people outside. He's been expressing more emotion, um, expressing um, that he has interests in dancing, expressing that he cares for people. And this is something I've quite liked. I've quite liked Sherlock becoming more human, character development. He's... John has changed him for the better, and so has Mary. And he, then he does something so completely insensitive and so completely stupid and arrogant and horrible. It feels like that's just been unwritten and just say, no, 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 he's Sherlock, he's fine, you know, oh, Sherlock. I feel like this new Sherlock wouldn't do that? I don't know, this is just personal opinion, but that that's how I kind of feel. And then that, uh, and, and it brings to mind the possibility, was Sherlock, like, kind of thinking about this and, like, knew about this, kind of, from the start, and has he been acting like that the whole time? And that would just be horrible, because that's, like, revealing the whole thing was a dream. Speaking of dreams, the Mind Palace sequence after Sherlock got shot. Spoilers! Sorry. Bloody hell was that good. I really enjoyed the Mind Palace sequence with him running around the corridors of his Mind Palace. Molly being an active part of his Mind Palace. Also, more worryingly, Anderson. But I suppose it keeps him awake and annoyed. Um, I loved it. I loved Molly bossing him around, telling him what to do. It felt very good. Um, Sherlock being unsure as what gun it is. Um, Sherlock being very stupid because, of course, he would be if he's just been shot. And Sherlock coping with, like, the stress and the shock and him stroking his dog and having child fond childhood memories of this dog. And then the asylum scene with Moriarty, um, which... And I'm not too sure about the... I feel like in Sherlock's mind, personally, I feel like Moriarty wouldn't be locked up like that in Sherlock's mind palace. I feel like Moriarty in his mind palace would be as he was. Like, I feel like he would be the pristine man in the suit sitting on an armchair. Or a throne in a crown. But then, there's kind of thing that I didn't like about the mind palace sequence is that, um... Sherlock's own mind... Um, simulating Moriarty goes, Oh, John Watson's in danger. And then Sherlock's like, Oh no, John Watson's in danger. I should probably get up and make sure he's fine because I'm Sherlock and I'm brilliant so I should not die. And he wakes up and he's revived and he stays alive by the power of love. Oh, bloody hell. Mm -hmm. Sure, it's a visual metaphor for, you know, not giving up on life and being determined and stuff and fighting for your life, but it feels kind of like that episode of Doctor Who with Craig and the Cybermen. You know, the one, I can't remember who wrote that episode, it's not Stephen Moffat, but I think he may have been borrowing some ideas from this person. <laughs> the power of love is a curious thing. Make one man weep and another man sing and another man come back to life and then shoot Hannibal's brother. Okay, I want to go back to Janine. Are you suspicious of Janine? I'm suspicious of Janine. I read a Tumblr theory that she's related in some way to Moriarty. The most obvious link there is the Irish accent. But I can kind of see where they're coming from. I mean, that final scene between Janine and Sherlock feels very hostile, she feels very much in control, she feels like a villain in that. She feels more like a villain than uh, Mickelson's character did at any point in that episode. Uh, I've written it down. Um, she says, we could have been friends. And that seems like that. I'm sure she, uh, Moriarty has said that in the past, and 
um, how much more, and she goes, how much more revenge will you have on me? And she said, oh, maybe just a little, you know, top it up now and again. That's terrifying. Is she now a returning villain? Is she Moriarty? Is she Moriarty's sister? I don't know. Apparently in the books, Moriarty had a brother. Then I skip forward a bit. I generally quite enjoyed the first 40 minutes or so of that episode, I think. It started great. Um, but then it kind of got a bit jumpy. Then it jumped to Christmas, then it jumped back to the house, then it jumped... Oh... It felt messy, it felt like it was trying to create a sense of mystery. And it was trying really hard to create a sense of mystery when you think, oh, what's going on? But it didn't work. Uh, kind of like Batman Begins. Um, it can create confusion on the first few watches. Um, once I get into it, you know, once you get into it, yeah, you understand. But you should be able to understand, I think, on your first watch. I um, know, I'm being nitpicky, aren't I? And also, about the Christmas thing, is it just me or does this whole series feel like it was broadcast at the wrong time of the year? I mean, I guess it, we're still on the tail end of Christmas, it's only the 13th. But still, uh, like, Christmas was in weeks ago. Uh, bonfire Night was weeks ago. It feels like this should have been broadcast in November, Dece early December. That's how it feels. But instead it was broadcast in January. And it just feels out of place. Much in the same way as Iron Man 3, which was released in the summer and set at Christmas. I, I, I genuinely do not know why that was set at Christmas. There was no actual proper good reason for it. It just happened to be set during Christmas. The other one I've written down, that's a quote. When, uh, Mycroft is talking about Sherlock Holmes, he says something along the lines of, uh, I don't often go in for familial, uh, sympathy or something along that lines. You know what happened to the other one. The other one? The other Holmes? Is there another Holmes brother? Is this a future plot line? I'm looking forward to finding out, unless we never find out, as what happens a lot of the time in Stephen Moffat things, and then he explains it in five minutes and makes a really bad last episode for a series and leading actor. Oh, and then the end! Oh, the end! I had several problems with the end. It's probably probably one of the most disappointing ends. Um, it, though I enjoyed it way more on my second viewing, uh, it is still my least favorite episode of Sherlock of all time, mainly because of its ending. So it ends. Sherlock is exiled. Sherlock is sent out to you know be a hero and a, be an agent in another country. John and Sherlock are having this talk, and then John goes, oh, "The game is over," and. <laughs> And Sherlock goes, the game is never over, John. <sighs> Cheesy 80s movie lines. It, feel, it felt really cheesy, it felt really cliche. It didn't feel like the serious endings that we had in other series, such as series 1 and series 2. This just sort of fell flat, it felt a bit... Yeah, <laughs> hey Sherlock, boo doop boo 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 hey. No, that's not what I want from Sherlock. Sherlock is an almost realistic show. It's set in a very stylized, real place. And in the real world, people don't say cheesy 80s action movie lines. They just don't. They have teary goodbyes. And then in addition to that, they, you know, they send them off. Great, that felt like an ending. Oh, right, there's another ending. Great. This is a director's cut version of the Lord of the Rings now, isn't it? Because this just ended, then it ended again. And oh, for f uh. so it ended with the cliffhanger that nobody was expecting at all. Oh, Moriarty's back. Why, why was everybody expecting that? Because there was no overarching villain in series three. In fact, 
There was no actual detective show in series three, and that has been my major problem. None of the episodes this series has had an actual investigation. Um, while all of the episodes of the past series felt like they did, they all had a specific goal in that episode. I guess the Magnuson thing could be seen as a case, but it wasn't like a murder mystery. It wasn't a Sherlock Holmes case. He was being a secret agent, he was being James Bond, not Sherlock Holmes. And that's what I didn't like. I didn't like that. And there's been, like, no actual proper investigating as being the actual plot of the episode all of this series, and I want that back in the next series, but I doubt it is going to come back in the next series, because the next series is going to be all about Moriarty. Great. I got the hiccups! So, this was a video about Sherlock, in which Josh rambles a whole lot. He had problems with it, and Magnuson was an obvious satire of Murdoch.